Jeremy Weiss here. We're here live at Retail X. I'm here with Fabricio, co-founder of Fleeber. What does Fleeber do? How did you come up with the name? Oh, okay. So Fleeber works uh, with uh, supply chain related things. So it, it, it has a relation with flow. And uh, flow in, in German is called Fleeben. Mm. So it's actually pronounced Fleesen, but has a beta. So it's kind of Fleeben. So you're from, I, from Brazil. Brazil I'm, so you yeah. put a B in there. Yeah, I just put a B in there. Yeah, it became Fleeber. <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys do? Uh, we call it sales synchronization. So um, what we're doing is we're connecting sales with inventory uh, to try to solve one of the main problems of retail, which is um, overstocking and stockouts, which is a $1.1 trillion problem that not a lot of people talk about. Why did you decide to take that on? I was, you know, as many uh, people in this show, I was a retailer in the past and I was solving my own problems with this tool. Um, and uh, at, at some point I just felt that it was pretty good and it was bringing great results and I decided to open it to the market. Client success story, someone using Fleeber and you know, what, what kind of results they're seeing and what they're doing with it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing how people focus a lot on marketing and not much in inventory. If you think about it, you know, inventory is what you've either enables or restricts sales. Uh, and still people are trying to sell more without knowing that they're gonna run out of stock tomorrow. So my, I think the biggest success story is not about one specific client, but it happens to everybody. When they start uh, working with us, what they see is a major decrease in their inventory levels uh, because we're much more efficient and the tools that we have allow them to connect the sales and to the inventory so they know what exactly they can sell each day. Uh, so what happens is that with this decrease in inventory levels, they are able to release trapped capital that they had in inventory not selling. So now they're able to grow the company without investing any more money. Uh, they're able to operate with a, more, a much more efficient uh, um, inventory um, flow, uh, and there comes Fleeber from there, uh, efficient inventory flow uh, that makes them be able to bring smaller quantities of products more times, more often. Um, and, it, you know, it completely revolutionizes the company because now they can grow, they can operate with less capital. Uh, they don't have, if, if a product is not selling, their inventory level is not huge, uh, so the losses are not huge. So it's a complete different scenario for people who operate with Fleaver. Fabrizio, what metrics should people be looking at to control their inventory? I know you are really big on, it's not necessarily sales, it's controlling the inventory because it's lacking up the capital. What metrics should people be looking at right now in their business to even, you know, some people don't even pay attention to it as much. Yeah, what we do a lot is to measure how many days uh, of inventory people have if they uh, uh, just project the future sales to their inventory levels. I think that's the best metric. If you keep it very low, we try to keep it between 20 and 30 days at most, while most people operate with 90 days of inventory level. Uh, and if you, if you keep that low, everything changes in your business. Okay. And then talk about a milestone for you with Fleeber. Yeah, uh, you, you mean a past milestone, right? Yeah, Something that milestone. happened. Uh, I think when we were able to develop the, the, the platform that automates most of these indicators so that people can now make the decisions correctly, I think that was the main milestone and that. And that's still going on, actually. We're still integrating new things every day. But we're you know, live. People are being able to see all the results on a tool. And I think that's that's great. Talk to the uh, the brands out there or sellers that what are some of the big mistakes you're seeing some of your your colleagues making in these intimate conversations you're having over dinner? Because I know you have a large network of, of people. Yeah. What do you mean the sellers? Right. Yeah. yeah. I think the main mistake, as I was mentioning before, is to focus only on growing sales. Growing sales is amazing, it's very important, but if you don't grow sustainably, it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't bring you the results. So the focus on top line instead of bottom line is the main mistake. And if you think about it, uh, top line is about marketing and sales, bottom line is about operations. That's where you either win or lose money. So I think that is the main mistake of most sellers, focus on, on top line instead of bottom yeah. line. Um, let's go there because one of your strengths is operations, yep. right? And so what are some tips for making operations more efficient? What are some of the things you've been able to put in place? Um, first, uh, if all the sellers want to have the infrastructure that we have on Fleeber to operate efficiently, 
uh, I think they're not going to be very, very profitable because what we do is we, we deploy all of our knowledge in this specific segment. Uh, and I think a seller cannot be good at everything. So sellers should be selling, should be focused on product, product launching, uh, and should leave those little extra parts of the company to people who are specialized on that. So, um, you know, in, in other words, to operate efficiently, I think you have to have good partners around you helping with the infrastructure that you need to sell better and more uh, profitably. Talk about your thoughts on the future of retail and e-commerce. Yeah. I love this subject. So, um, you know, I, I left Wall Street to join e-commerce uh, three and a half to four years ago. And the reason I did that, I did that was that because it was because I saw that only 8% of total retail sales were online. Today, it's still less than 14%. So everybody that thinks that retail has revolutionized already, we're not even in the start of this revolution. You know, there's no, no question that we're going to have 60 to 70 percent of retail online in a few years. So, you know, in terms of future, I think the whole industry is changing. Um, as I was mentioning to you the other day, uh, you have, you know, uh, suppliers like like you have freight forwarders, you have freight companies, you have the, the suppliers in China or other countries. They're all set up for volume because that's how retail was in the past. You had to distribute your products throughout all the stores in the world. So you need a lot of inventory, you need volume, you need speed and volume. Now it's the other game. Uh, it's a game of very, it, you have to be very efficient to operate. So I think a lot of things are going to change. Their suppliers are going to have to get used to lower quantities, lower MOQs. The freight companies are going to get used to transporting lower quantities of products profitably because today, if they do that, it's so expensive. Uh, and the sellers are going to have to get used to having a much more efficient flow of inventory going. So that's my prediction for the future. Fabricio, thank you. Live from RetailX.